President Diamond asked Ms. Lemke, I believe it was Trustee Ryan, who asked um, Susan to look into um, different libraries in the middle of that discussion. Um, I don't know, I thought I did. Okay. Well, you I may have I later, did. but she brought it up, and that's that was like the directive to <clears throat> Susan. Well, so I don't know if you Linda by yourself can't give me a directive. It has to be sort of Karen having gotten a sense of the board. One trustee can't give me a directive. Yeah. Um, and you Linda, one or the other? Yeah, I, I did bring, um, I remember saying something, I mean, but it doesn't matter to me. I do remember you said something about it. Yeah, Check and other I think you did say something do. about it. Right. And I think I asked Linda, if, or rather asked Susan if right. she'd look into it. Right, because there was so much discussion, it was just like easier just to remember to make some hopeful view that that would be a good idea. Right, right. Right. Okay. Um, are there any other comments? I, I think it, I think so. Just the point is because if after everything goes around, then I do believe that you then. I think so. I think it's fine either way. All right. Uh, without hearing any others, uh, I guess for roll call. Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Uh, yes. Diane? Yes. Pat Olson? Linda? Yes. Yes. Um, all right. Is anyone registered for public comment? No? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can anyone who has to speak? Okay. All right. Karen. Um, Next on the agenda is the treasurer's report. All right, we are doing well. This is our ninth month, mar our marches anyway. And that is 75% of the way through the budget. And the library's overall expenses are under budget at 67%. So kudos to everybody involved uh, in this area. On page 10, our total, our property tax uh, revenues, I'm sorry. Our total revenues are 100%, so we're right on top of that. Property tax is 100. So our replacement tax, though, if you notice, it's 47 percent so that's uh, a bit under, though obviously we have no control on that. Uh, we did get an additional $30,000 payment that was received this month in April, so that'll bring that up a bit closer, but we have no further information on what may or may not come. Uh, our interest is really doing well, so good job, Greg, on that. And our uh, passports, they're doing well, 105%, and we're only, you know, we're, we're three quarters of the way through, so we're, we're clearly on track to, uh, to shatter that budget expectation on passports. Good job for that. <laughs> Salaries are on budget right there at 73%, so another good job. Page 11, uh, library materials a little high, but that's going to even out by the end of the year. Our Expectation. Operating expenditure is 60%, again, well under budget. Uh, nothing else to note on that. Page 12, uh, general admin, 68, 60, I'm sorry, 61%, so again, well under budget, nothing on that to note uh, for me. And page 13, again, 
Uh, everything's really doing well. Uh, our special um, our capital expenditure, special reserve, so you notice that's at 21%. But we had that $31,000 payment that we approved for the cooler. That will be applied to that budget for right now. And then we do have additional things that uh, the board will discuss and approve in that area as well. Um, but it doesn't look like it's really going to come anywhere near uh, what we uh, Just one comment on that. Sure. Go ahead, Thank you. you know, when we uh, put the budget together at the beginning um, of this fiscal year, we had, a, you know, we had some pretty broad estimates. Uh, I'll give you one example. The chiller, for example, was budgeted at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and the actual cost, uh, once we went to competitive bidding, ended up being one hundred and forty-seven thousand. So there's a few are, uh, a few items like that um, that are going to cause us to be uh, underspent, and um, uh, quite frankly, there are some items which are being transferred to the next uh, fiscal year just because we ran out of time to try to. You know, well, yeah, there's only so much time in the year. Um, so, um, you know, so I mean, that's typically the story of of every year. We try to put aggressive plans together to address the needs of the building and so forth. And, and then, depending on, on uh, the luck of uh, the bidders and and, uh, and so forth, and, and how they, all that process rolls out, uh, we may or may not accomplish it. Thank you very much. For that. On page 14, there's nothing else to note. Uh, worker staff is one thing, and as we've talked about. Okay. Um, that's it for me. Okay. Any questions about the financial report? All right. Then I'll entertain a motion to approve the payment of bills for operating expenses of $218,583.52, payroll expenses of $279,079.90. For a total monthly expense of $497,673.42. Uh, I make a motion. Second. Okay. Any questions or comments on payment of bills? All right, they have a roll call then. Can I, can I just ask one question? Mm -hmm. I was looking at the um, bank register and um, it looks like um, we're to us what page you're looking at? Well, actually, the entire register. I'm just recapping. And it looks like um, there are quite a few purchases from materials. And I recall last year in April, it was pretty much the same thing. And um, I always wondered why in April, like less than 60 days before budget end, that we had such large purchases. And I know I was told it had to do with the summer program. And I'm wondering if that's really true. I mean, I, I think the program expenses do vary according to there's a lot retained for summer reading for for the program, but for um, for the materials budget, there is a lot of purchasing that goes on this time of year. It's um, everybody is coming to the end of the purchasing year, so anybody that hasn't been purchasing, you know, very evenly. Um, they're at the point in the year where they're going. I still have two thousand dollars left to spend on music. I better get that that order in. They may have been working on it, but they haven't finished it. And then it's also that there's a there are publishing falls and seasons. There's a spring season and a fall season. So um, there are a lot of books coming out right now, and so that's where some of the spending is. Do you have? Um, I'm not sure what your department had submit. Um, for their budget year because I know we finally came to the conclusion we don't have department operating budgets, but do they present to you in the beginning of the budget year just what, when, or what their their purchase expectations will be throughout the year? Or is it just based on there's money in the budget? No, well, I mean, um, we know that people are going to come to the library expecting us to have the newest books, and we purchase in partly in response to patron demand. So if somebody has come out with something that is very, very popular, we know that we are going to need to purchase some more of that. So that's a lot of how the publishing flows and they've held some of their big books for, you know, they don't put out a lot of big books in February, say. It, they, they purchase, they start throwing them out in March, April, May. So that's when a lot of the big books are coming out. Um, so they, you know, they know what, 
they have spent in the past year and the year before that and the year before that, they have a lot of reports based on what people are checking out, what people are placing holds on. They can see what the demand is. They can see uh, if they're meeting the demand or if they, if they aren't. So they look at how much money they have left and they look at how much, you know, in some formats, the, it's shifting, you know, it, with like music, say. I know that Children's is cutting back on their music purchasing for next year because they've looked at it and they can see that parents are much more likely to have children streaming music these days. They aren't checking out little CDs anymore. So, so they're adjusting according to that. They don't come up with a, a master list of what exactly they want to purchase because they don't know for sure what's coming out. It looks like Ariane wants to Sorry, contribute uh, something. The following year's book awards, when those that's, that's are right. announced, we we are sure to have the book awards because everything goes into the news media outlets and parents come and they're asking specifically for these titles, so we buy them in quantity. And also we're getting geared up to buy um, at the high school and in the elementary school, some are reading this. So, so, just just gonna actually we, we, so do your department, but do you as department heads submit your budget breakdown to her for your entire year? April is these awards, or summer is summer reading. I mean, does but she have don't break them out? Of course, so to not to provide her with a department budget so she could see when your peaks and valleys are. Well, I mean, I know, what, I know what the peaks and valleys are. But I nothing's know. in writing, so there's no department operating budget at well, their level that goes to you. Everything is in writing in one way or another. We, we all are looking at our reports. We all know what is coming out. We've got our review journals. We're looking ahead. There's the pre-publishing list. But, you know, Greg has pointed out to me here that they actually underspent last month what they were supposed to spend in the month. You know, a lot of the materials budget is sort of front-loaded off because all the subscriptions get paid at the beginning of the year. So they were budgeted to spend uh, 64000 and they spent fifty-five. So, you know, I, there's nothing out of the usual. To this year. Well, what's out of the usual is that we don't plan our spending. We, that they don't bring to you their plan for the year at any level. I know you can't say specifically what books you're buying, but if April is some sort of award situation and, and that requires certain purchasing, what, I mean, do they not bring anything in writing? So you could say, this is the children's department. This is what they're doing in 2019, 2020. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out how we plan for next Isn't year. Isn't this a budget question rather than a finance Report question. Well, I'm responding to Susan, and I'm asking about the purchases, right. and, I and if they're high at this point. So I'm trying right. to figure out how do we gauge our well, spending. Well, that, that would be a budget question. So no, it's understand. about spending. That's why I brought well, it up. You're asking if they bring a budget to, to them. That's that seems more like right. So that this purchasing isn't automatic, is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking well, it's actually think planned. Plan. Yeah. But it doesn't look like it. It looks like based on whatever's happening, we just purchase. Well, publishing is in cycles. They are going to be going through and they're going to be selecting the things that they think our people are going to want. And they're Absolutely. going to be making choices on a book by book or DVD by DVD basis. And that would be a good that would be a good avenue for a library's budget to be based on. And it, that it, would give you something to go Sounds it, like a budgeting question. So, so, that we can, budget. so that we can, you know, budgeting shouldn't scare you. It's part of your spending. I'm not scared of very okay, little. I'm just so I'm just here. bringing out but a right point. Right now, you see, Carolyn, you can't talk about, we don't have that on the agenda to talk about the budget. I'm talking okay. about spending. Well, <laughs> call it whatever you you're want. asking about budget, not okay. spending. Okay. Well, thanks for answering that question. About the payments, the payments mm -hmm. that are being made this month. And to the extent there's questions about that, that's fine, but we really are getting far afield. Uh, the payments that we're making for this month. So then, so. in the answer to my question, the purchases that were made here, which are which look a lot more um, numerous than in the previous month, it's just random. It's not because well, we're set to said do it was things. Just I well, I'm asking heard, for I'm asking that somebody is prepared in advance. That uh, certain expenses come up at certain times of year, and that's typical, and that happens from year to year. But there's nothing in writing that we can gauge what we're doing in April and in May. So this is all understood in advance, as opposed to when the month comes, it just happens. That's what I'm getting at. I, I'm so managing, thank you. I am managing my staff and, and the budget that they have. That's, that's what's happening. Well, we're managing the spending. I was just wondering if we're planning in advance so we would have something to reflect, especially since 
you know, going into a new fiscal year. But you answered that question. Thank you. Yes. Okay, moving on to the director's report. Um, we have a fairly lengthy director's report here, thanks very much. Um, and did you have any communications to add to this? I, I do actually. We have, um, have received our per capita grant award letter for the 2019 year, which we should be arriving. Uh, it's, it's unpredictable, as we know, in the state of Illinois, but um, I, I think they always shoot for getting it to us by uh, sometime in May or June. So we, will, we are going to receive another $71,605 next year, which is exactly what we got this year. I think that works out to be $1.05 per resident. Um, What's that amount again? Seventy one. Uh, and then I just wanted to uh, just say for the record that the, um, the 60th anniversary parties, there was the one, the, the uh, VIP event on Friday night, and then with, they had a lot of the former trustees and former staff there. Um, it was absolutely wonderful, a wonderful night. Um, Winifred Kazuko was there, the um, person that had uh, gone to the women's club and said, we really need a library. We got them rolling on it, worked with the women's club, and her husband, Rudy, was the first board president. Um, of what 60 the library years district. ago this month. 60 years ago Tomorrow. this month, so that's what we were celebrating. So Kim made a lovely toast to Winifred, and she was, she's in her mid-90s, and she was wow. just, uh, she was very proper plumped. Yeah. <laughs> People yeah. kept coming up and Thank telling her know. how wonderful it is that she had this vision for something that would mean so much for the community and people mm -hmm. in their lives. So it was lovely. And then uh, on Sunday, there was a much more informal party for the uh, more kid-based, uh, Ariane and Mikey, who worked with Ariane and Victoria, um, did a sock hop. And so there were, there were, we have some adorable pictures of kids with hula hoops and bubbles. And, oh. and then they came up here and had cake. Uh, we, uh, Sasha's crew has been working very hard to set up a photo ops so that we're getting a lot of love on social media and they're putting together a video of people's memories of the library. So all in all it has been wonderful so far. There's still the event coming up at Golf Mill. A critical person on Sasha's staff named Robin uh, who uh, worked extremely diligently on this because you know as we know Sasha was a little bit busy. Uh, so so Robin really picked up the slack with the um, with the parties, and then uh, Greg and Victoria worked together with marketing and put together this exhibit, and I think it's really great. ended up just fantastic. I really encourage you to go and read through it, look at all the fun pictures. And the mayor came and spoke, and um, we had some previous trustees that were there, and it was just a lovely, lovely night. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say is I need a final count for Night of Roses so that Diane can make the reservation, I know I have Karen and Tim, and I do not remember who else that they wanted to go. I do. Carolyn, what day is that? Friday. Week from tomorrow. Week from Friday. Friday. Uh, just in terms of upcoming dates, um, it's in your uh, materials, but we shall remember to file our statement of economic interest yes. before May 1st. If you haven't done that already, we should do that. And also, just another thing to remember is that we have moved the regular Board of Trustees meeting a week back. So that's going to be on May 22nd. We did that earlier uh, in our fiscal year to set that meeting for May 22nd. So just so recap, I have Karen, Tim, Carolyn, for Night of Roses. Anyone else? Diane? Just give me a couple minutes. Okay, well, email me or Diane tomorrow. Or she needs to make yeah, a reservation. Figure it out tomorrow. There also is the Husky Banquet. Uh, no, I, I do want to go, but I had a kind of Oh, okay. What is the Husky Banquet? It's the uh, Charter. It's Latrone. You know, that one that they have every day. Friday. Friday. It's all times. It's all times. It's all That's all I have for my director's report. Oh, and Amber Bell? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's on the list. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. Well, it's just a reminder that, um, you know, that early bird signing up for uh, the ALA annual conference is coming right up. That's in June. And you, uh, one thing you want to think about when you think about the budget, you, you do need to think about if you're going to want to attend any conferences in the coming year. We do have PLA this year in Nashville, and we have, and then ALA the following summer. This summer is Washington, D.C. The following summer will be Chicago. So for budgeting purposes, decide if you're going to want to go to Chicago. But at least it's not travel expenses for that. When are you again? PLA is the end of February this year, so I'm really concerned about the weather because it was very snowy last time, but that's when they put it. Nashville doesn't snow in Nashville. No, it's just glare ice. No problem. What's the Mavs of the Night of the Roses? Night of the Roses is. Is it right? Lone Tree? Chateau Ritz. Chateau Ritz. Chateau Ritz. That's right. Is on the board of the chamber. So, and the time begins. Sorry, I think it's six. Um, okay, are there uh, any um, reports from the well, I have a couple of comments. Oh, oh, great, great, great. Uh, first thing at page 30. I think they were storytelling or something. So so. He was, yeah. I asked his permission before I put that in. You just do it. And then on uh, page 39, uh, and again, uh, really good kudos to the uh, E-rate, uh, getting the E-rate grant. That's just wonderful. Yeah, that's a ton of work. That is great. You know, I had a question for Susan. Um, I don't know how to word this. It's under hiring, and I noticed that Dave has um, gone from a full time to a to two part time. Is this um, uh, what page are you looking at? On page thirty seven. Is this in response to um, that situation you mentioned? Uh, it is. Okay. That's what I thought. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. Uh, the test proctoring. Uh, what type of tests are that are they that are proctoring? Uh, well, it's, uh, we used to do for Morgan's kids when they were taking classes online. Oh, yeah. um, homeschooling. It, it's, it can be homeschooling. It's much more off of college type exam stuff where they're taking an online course and they have an uh, exam that they have to complete. It has to be overseen in some way. So it's not like our staff are like watching them take the test. They kind of get them situated with a laptop or something. and and the, But they verify that the person is who they say they are. And it's sort of like being a notary, but just a little bit more extended. I've gotten calls from universities verifying that the person who's overseeing it is a reference librarian or is qualified to do it in some way. Neil O'Shea used to do a lot of it. So now we have a couple other people working on it. Are, um, then my question is, like, are they allowed to do anything else while the people are testing? Well, they're, they're working the desk, yeah. Oh, okay. they're, they're usually like kind of so in eyesight. So it's not like but they just then are oh, stopping gosh, no. for like two no. hours and just staring down the person's back or mm -hmm. out there just checking. Yeah, they just wander and like plop them at the table and get them going, and they go back to okay. business. And um, our kudos to Miss Victoria for the ALA. Do you have something in here? That ILA. Yeah. I mean the ILA. Yeah. yeah. They go on my library's leadership. And I think that was the only other thing besides. Well, I should mention that down page 41, despite the fact that Tim reminded me last month that I had the years wrong on the proposed budget calendar, I still have the dates wrong on the proposed budget calendar. But we're sure it'll be our next time. Yeah, I'm so oh, 18? Sure. Oh. Yes. We <laughs> live 2018. Yeah. That was good. I gave up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I changed the date on the group um, for the um, economic the statement of economic interest, do we need to know a code? I mean, you should have received yeah, it um, in your email. There, your you should have sent your email about it. Okay. Right. Yeah. So look into that. 
to. Yeah, I'll get there. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments about the director's report? Um, any reports from the the library? Um, I actually requested um, to know when their next board meeting is mm -hmm. um, because we had our board meeting scheduled today and I have not heard. So I was unable to get that information. All right. Anything uh, from legislative? Yeah. Rails? Yeah. All right. And then let's move to new business. <coughs> Uh, during new business, do I hear a motion to award R.A. Peterson Company uh, contract in the amount of twenty-two thousand seven hundred fifty dollars to repair, seal, and strike the library parking lot, which should be paid from the special reserve fund. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Okay, second. All right. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Questions in public, Ray, on this repair and the uh, awarding of bid, close awarding of bid. You know, I just had a general question. I was looking at the other bids for the other items, and they seem so detailed there by the individual contractors. It's on their letterhead, and this one seems to consist of just a form. So I spoke with Susan earlier because I was concerned that this really isn't a bid they submitted, right? Is it just a recap sheet that you Yeah, they, they submitted um, other forms as well, uh, insurance forms uh, showing okay. that they were pro properly insured and uh, so forth. Um, and uh, I just, you know, I just didn't. Oh, no, that's fine. But I was itself. alarmed because what I was wondering is I know that like one of the line items is installation of asphalt. I'm sure there's a designated type of quality, which you've already, okay. And then I was concerned about insurance and then the removal of the, the debris. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right, that's what alarmed me. Okay, well it's good to know then, thanks. I think one of our comments from the public was that our parking lot was itchy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's going to be fixed. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, they've yeah. already had it cleaned. Yeah, yeah. It's like wash. under the, okay. the snow peak, but of course not. There's any snow peak. It's in the, it's in the uh, dead air space in the corner. Yeah, uh, and nice. it collects stuff all winter long. And oh. It's icky in the spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's it's the icky ice. It was the icky fight. Yeah. The icky fight. <laughs> and the wind blew some more and it's some more. Mm. <clears throat> all right. Okay. So we do have this motion on the table. And I'd like to hear a roll call, please. Karen? Uh, yes. Carolyn? Um, yes. Diane? Yes. Linda? Yes. Tim? Yes. Okay, all right. Next, I need a motion to approve the expenditure of $7,154.54 from the Special Reserve Fund for two Apple MacBook Pro laptops, including support from CDW-G Government LLC. Do you write your motion? Motion. Second. All right, so we have a little information on page 56 um, regarding this purchase. Uh, does anyone have any questions uh, about this banner? I do. Mm -hmm. um, two um, Apple MacBook Pros for 7,000. Is there some like exceptional software on these? No, this is for the equipment and uh, for Apple Care to make sure that, um, that they're um, under warranty. So the 7000 is the cost of two laptops plus some sort of Apple Care like insurance or whatever? Yeah, the invoice follows it. And, oh, and, thanks, and thanks. So, Greg, did you want to explain just the, how we go about uh, getting the price from the local uh, government pricing generalized? Right. So, um, uh, Apple only sells at one price, and uh, so you can go to CDW or, or any other supplier and you'll get exactly the same price. Um, so, we typically, we have a relationship with CDW government and uh, I know our stuff there. So all of it's pre-negotiated and that's okay. it. If you look at mine, that's what you're going to get. Yeah. Do we get any discount for being a government filing? No sales tax. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Okay. 
right. Um, all right, so we do have a pending motion. Would you, uh, I guess, roll call, Karen? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Uh, Diane? Yes. Linda? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, so we now need a motion to approve the second amended and restated intergovernmental utilities <coughs> purchasing cooperative agreement between the Isles Main District Library and IUPC to provide electricity and natural, natural gas to the library. Do I have such a motion? Motion. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Um, so, um, <coughs> Susan, Greg, would you like to tell us a little bit more about this? Okay. So um, there's an organization out there called the uh, IUPC, and it's a uh, bunch of uh, small governmental units similar to the library. Uh, as a matter of fact, the library would be one of the smallest of the members. There's about 150 members overall. Um, and what they do is they aggregate all of the needs of the um, of the various entities and they take that to market and they get favorable rates. Um, they buy forward, you know, several months. Um, they watch the price uh, fluctuations and try to take advantage of them and so forth. When, um, when I started uh, talking to them, and, I, and I've actually been looking for some way to buy our utilities uh, more cheaply. Um, uh, when I started talking to them, I had them reprice all of last year on the last 12 months to see what the savings would have been based on what they were doing. And it looks like we would have saved somewhere between uh, five and six thousand dollars on the year. To put it in perspective, uh, we spend a little over a hundred thousand dollars on, uh, on uh, gas and electricity. So it's a little over five percent. Um, it doesn't cost us anything. Um, we just filed a um, an, we file our agreement with the utility and put the utility on notice that, in fact, this is our, who our supplier is, and, uh, and then we reap the benefits. Uh, now, that's not to say that the transmission part of it, there's two pieces of your utility bill. There's the actual stuff that you use, the electricity and the gas and so forth. And then there's the infrastructure, the delivery system, uh, which actually brings it to your you know, to your appliances and so forth, or actually to the wall, and then, and then on, the, on our side of the wall, we're responsible for it. Um, we can't do anything about the transportation or the transmission costs, because, you know, combat is no business and there's, uh, in that regard, and there's no other way to get it to us. So what we're doing is contracting to have um, a coal-fired plant or nuclear facility, put electricity into the system for combat runs, and then deliver electricity to us through their transmission system. The transmission part stays there. All right. So would we get a bill from both combat for transmission? No. Uh, it would be, a, uh, the way that it works is that it's a pass-through. So you get you get one bill from combat, and then you get, uh, you'll see the discounts on, on your bill. Okay. And it looks like we have to send a cancellation letter to Vista Energy. Yes. Would we be timely sending them a cancellation note? Um, they might require 60 days minimum. Uh -huh. um, but we don't know if you don't ask. Um, and is there a cancellation fee? No. This is this a yearly agreement or is this a... You know, um, when, we, when we started talking to, to the IUPC, uh, they said, where do you get your gas from? I said, Northern Illinois Gas. I said, yeah, I get my electricity from Commonwealth Edison. And they said, send us your bills. And they sent the bills, they did the research, and they said, you know, you have a contract with Vista Energy for separate. So some time ago, somebody somewhere uh, agreed to buy gas from uh, Vista Energy. Um, or we were buying electricity basically on the spot market uh, uh, from uh, Commonwealth Edison. So, you know, we've been fortunate in, in our uh, pricing. It hasn't gone too crazy. <coughs> uh, you can tell by the savings about 5%. Um, 
and, and the electricity, but and and the, and, the, and the gas. So, you know, there was some small savings. We just have to move away from uh, this energy. But, but is this a new agreement? Is it like a year-long agreement? Or uh, this? No, it's in perpetuity. Uh, there's, oh, until uh, we cancel it. Yeah, same as the last. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, sorry. It's okay. Answering my question. Okay. All right. Anyone have another question? Just clarification. So um, the discount then will be on the energy itself, but the delivery costs are the same, mm -hmm. or do they have a different rate? Mm -hmm. Same. And in terms of buying gas from Vista in the past. Apparently, this deal is better than what we were getting from this. Is that it? Yeah, about $1,000, $800. Okay. But you're, you're doing it all in a package anyway, yeah. which is probably better. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. This question, because I think the village does something very similar, right? They should yes. send us something and say, which is available with them, because they're a little percentage less. Than yeah, right. Right. So, but we don't get, we're not able to use the villages. Uh, I'm sure we're able to use the village, um, but this is better. But this is better. Oh, okay, that's my question. So, can we get our plan onto this plan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering. It doesn't have to ask. No, no, it doesn't. I'm sorry. I don't need to laugh. At it. <laughs> I'll check. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks for looking into that. Yes, well, thank you yeah. for yeah. doing yeah. that. Um, you know. That's something that comes up all the time, and yeah. I just enjoy it. So, <laughs> all right, um, we do need a, a roll call, I believe. So, uh, which, uh, yes. Carolyn? Yes. Danielle? Yes. Linda? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, the next two motions are to refurbish the two bathrooms in the fixed space. Uh, I need a motion to award Flatter Plumbing and Heating a contract in the amount of $6,940.20 to furnish and install new plumbing fixtures in the two bathrooms and kids' space, which will be paid from the Special Reserve Fund. Um, do I hear a motion? I make a motion. Second. All right, uh, all right, Susan, or Greg, can you sort of give us an overview of this whole project? Uh, certainly. So uh, these are the two bathrooms that are um, in kid space. Uh, they're side by side. Uh, they're used mostly uh, by you know kids and families. Um, they've um, uh, they've existed as they are today, or as as they have in the past over the last 20 years. And you know, they're pretty beat up. Um, they're, uh, uh, no amount of cleaning can, can uh, clean certain of the, uh, certain amounts of the dirt uh, from there. And um, we had it in the budget last year, uh, this year, I should say, to uh, re redo them. Um, you know, we, we looked at getting a general contractor in, but, you know, it's, it's a relatively simple job. You know, basically consisting of uh, construction and plumbing, and uh, so, so Dave uh, Dabrowski uh, bid them out, uh, uh, bid them out separately to uh, various contractors. Um, you know, as you can tell by the grid on page 71, um, you know we got a lot of different options. You know, the demo, for example, is anywhere from three thousand dollars to almost nine thousand dollars. Um, unfortunately, when they bid a uh, demo, except in the case of uh, Kerrigan, uh, it was wrapped up as you know part of the larger deal. So what they were really doing in the case of uh, uh, Pinnacle, for example, which is going to be the next motion, they were combining the two for seventeen thousand eight hundred, um, and um, uh, we had to go through them and try to figure out what was the best uh, best deal for the library. Um, if you add the two numbers together, the 17.8 and the 69.40, it almost totals $25,000. <coughs> like uh, 24.40 or, or something like that. Um, you know, I just want to make sure that uh, everybody at this table understands that we're, we're below the state procurement uh, process minimum of $25,000. Um, otherwise, given the rules, we we may have, we might have had to go out and uh, uh, actually take uh, 
bids the way that we did for the parking lot, for example, which we thought was going to be over 25, but ended up at 22 or 2250. Uh, nevertheless, um, uh, this motion deals with Flader. Uh, Flader is uh, going to uh, remove and reinstall plumbing uh, fixtures, make sure that uh, connections are appropriate. Uh, they have has them putting a couple of uh, valves in for uh, that are more easily accessed. You know, so there's a little bit of work behind the walls. We're not changing uh, any of the major components. Uh, otherwise, uh, we'd, have, we'd be talking a different animal at this point. But we'll have all new fixtures. Uh, one of the fix one of the rooms will have a fixture that's closer to the floor to be more child friendly, because uh, that's been. Uh, that's been an ongoing issue in, uh, in kid space, and uh, I think that I think this is going to be uh, this is a pretty good price for what we're doing. Um, so, if we're looking at page seventy-one, um, the um, recommended contract for the plumbing work itself uh, would go to Flater Plumbing and Heating for sixty-nine forty. Right. And then if you're looking at the top, the Pinnacle Flooring Company, they would do the actual demolition and construction for 17800 right? Right. Okay. Right. Um, they, would, uh, they would demo and they would uh, take the uh, waste away. Uh, they would uh, take it all the way down to the stubs. They, the stubs, they put the green board up, which is water resistant, um, and then they would uh, retile. Uh, there's, uh, I think it's a five dollar per square foot, five dollar per square foot uh, allowance for the tile. Um, but you know, if we're looking for, you know, basic commercial grade. Um, we'll probably go with larger format to have tile to have less uh, crop lines because crop lines is a place where dirt collects and, and becomes uh, becomes an issue. Okay. Weren't these weren't these bathrooms done when we did the remodeling? No, they were not. The bathrooms off of the commons were we done. Right. Okay, the only other bathrooms were done. Okay. All right. Uh, who else has questions? I, I just had one. Mm -hmm. So, um, in remodeling the, these bathrooms, they'll be children's bathrooms, correct? Like the lower toilets, the lower sinks. What really will them. What will have a lower toilet? Just and 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 a slightly lower sink. The other one will be like an adult. Okay. Yeah. All right. And it's really children and families. That's true. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. The only yes. other thing is, uh, both <coughs> companies they'll work together and yes, they'll you know have set a schedule with day. I'll be the general contractor. Okay. And yeah. you'll be okay. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. You know, one of the things I do want to pick out, uh, point out is uh, with respect to uh, uh, the plumbing bids, we did receive a bid. For 49.25, uh, but it was a non-conforming bid. That particular bidder did not pay prevailing wage, uh, so we couldn't accept it. Um, uh, just in case there's any any question there, it kind of looks funny unless you understand that detail. Any other questions? Okay, may I have a roll call then? Yes. Uh, yes. Diane. Yes. Linda. Yes. Yes. All right. The, the next motion, so related to this one, we just did, is to award Pinnacle Flooring Company a contract in the amount of seventeen thousand three hundred to demolish the two bathrooms in case space, remove all the material, furnish and install green board, and furnish and install tile, all of which will be paid from the special reserve fund. Do I have a motion to approve this? Motion. Second. Yeah, are there any additional questions? Uh, I just want to point out that um, it looks like Valley of Floor and Walt Incorporated had a lower bid, uh -huh. um, but their bid was a partial bid. It did not include it's furnishing and, and installing and finishing the green board, um, which we estimated at approximately $2,500. Uh, Reach out to a contractor that uh, that's done work in the library before and ask them, you know, approximate dimension and cost and so forth. I see. Okay. So when you add uh, twenty five hundred to their bid of uh, thirteen twenty 
12, um, it ends up you know, somewhat over the uh, construction uh, bids that we're looking at. Total, certainly more than Pinnacle. Uh, additionally, we have to contract with a separate company altogether, so we have three companies involved uh, in order to do the, uh, uh, in order to do the demolition. Okay, well, I can see it's a little hard to compare all these bids because of the variety yeah. and the way that they submitted it. And did all bid for exactly the same type of work. Um, and does anyone else have any questions? Mm -hmm. All right, then may I have a roll call? Karen? Yes. Carolyn? Yes. Diane? Yes. Linda? <coughs> yes. Tim? Yes. All right. Um, so we have now got through all the bids, and um, next thing on our agenda is the um, 2019-2020 budget. This is the first presentation. And we also need to schedule a special budget meeting. Now, I, just so I don't forget, I'd like to maybe uh, schedule the budget meeting right now so that we, we can make sure we get a date on our calendar. Uh, a date has been suggested uh, Monday, May 20th. Um, I'd like the board members to look at their calendars and see if that's a date that they can make. And if so, <coughs> I'd like us to pencil that in. Is that uh, date acceptable to all who are here now? All time. Yeah. Uh, same, same time, I think. 7 p.m.? Um, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Okay, all right. Now, just so you remember, that's going to be two days before our actual meeting. Yeah. So, we need to do that. <clears throat> all right, so we've got a date down. And now we have uh, the first draft here. And, uh, Greg, would you like to walk us through this? Uh, certainly. I can give you some comments. Okay. Uh, starting on page one, um, you're know, just looking at the revenue. The revenue has only changed uh, slightly. Uh, as with past budgets, I don't make any changes to the property taxes. Um, that action doesn't actually come up on the board's agenda until the uh, October, November time frame. Um, going on down to the bottom of the page with salaries, um, I'd like the um, I'd like to make the board aware that we put in, oops, um, and I see on page, at the top of page two, I have some uh, NAs. I'll, I'll send this out electronically to everybody with the correction. But essentially what, um, what we tried to do was uh, put in the 3.5 and the 5.5 um, uh, salary grades that we talked about at the last meeting. So if you look about Oh, I don't know, a third of the way down the page at Payroll Associate, uh, under the column that says 2018-19 budget, you see zero, and then for this budget, you see $117,000. That's because that grade did not exist last year, and it's, it's going to look a little bit, it's going to look a little bit funny. You have to combine that. You have basically have to look at it as a whole. Okay, but the good news is 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 that the overall salary. Uh, group of accounts is only up by about $5,000 compared to last year, which I don't think is too bad. So, well, maybe I should let you finish, but why are these all other ones all going down practically? Well, um, so we've taken, we've taken uh, employees out of one account and we put them into another account, essentially. So you'll see some accounts go down, you'll see some accounts go up. So like the assistant supervisors were in the librarian line, now they're in the line above that. So it's been taken out of the librarian, which you cannot take for this DNA, but sorry. But, but um but they that will that line has been reduced by the two seventy eight. Yes. Well, I'm sorry, why don't you continue on? Yep. Um, the next group of accounts uh, represents library materials. Um, library materials um, on uh, middle of page three uh, was $772,000 in the current year's budget. It's gone up slightly. 
to 784. It's gone up just slightly less than $12,000 overall uh, for the uh, uh, for the budget year that we're talking about. Um, in the next group of accounts, library operating expenses. Um, that line, that group of accounts is up uh, nearly $48,000. Uh, the big reason there is software and licenses. We have we have uh, a number of accounts, a number of products that are on um, more less than an annual rotation. So we paid them a few years ago. It's like our backup software and stuff like that. We pay like four or five years at a time. Okay, so um, that's the biggest driver there. Printing um, is up slightly to account for increased cost with delivering six times a year, uh, uh, chapter one or the uh, monthly new, uh, the uh, newsletter, um, as opposed to four times a year. Uh, general administrative um, is up uh, $15,000 over last year, and the driver there is professional development in the middle of page four. Um, if you, maybe you don't remember, but every other year, we have a uh, public library association conference coupled with the uh, AL ALE conference. Um, and uh, in the off years, we only have the ALA conference. So, so a, lot of, uh, a lot of the uh, cost increase there is because of the doubling up of conferences. Um, if we look at uh, vehicle operations, I mean, it's a small amount, but you know, it's uh, slightly favorable at about $1,500. Uh, employee fringe benefits. Um, employee fringe benefits. Um, I'm sorry, can I ask a question? Yes, certainly. Uh, how old is the man now? <coughs> Three, uh, 2016. Um, so, three years old. How many? Five hundred now, so we got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. $6,000, $7,000. Oh, yeah. okay. I don't think I don't think we've had our first oil change yet. Just yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Just recently. Um, employee fringe benefits. Uh, any more? No. no, I'm sorry. Thank you. That's not. Um, employee fringe benefits. Um, uh, some good news there. Um, uh, I want to make a correction to the IMRF description. Um, the new the new rate uh, went to five point. I'm sorry, 6.07%, um, and that's principally driven by the uh, bad investment year that the fund had last year. If you remember, the uh, investment portfolio had a negative return of 4.5%, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but what they expect is a 7.5% return, so it's 11 something, almost 12%. That, uh, that they're trying to recoup. And uh, so at that point, what happens is uh, we, get a, we get a higher rate. But still uh, far lower than other rates around the, uh, you know, around the uh, IMRF world. Okay. It's not unheard of to take 12, 13, 14 percent. Well, yeah, I remember those kinds of discussions when we were looking at it. So I, yeah. I actually believe that we're just at about 6 percent. Yeah. And I think Can I ask we had talked about 8.12 percent, right? 8.21 percent, 8.12 uh, percent is what the starting right. uh, percentage was. Right. And uh, then it went down to 7.31, uh, down to 5.3, and now it's up to 6.07. Can I just ask one question? Um, I read something where it said um, the percentage I saw was diff like you mentioned, 4. Point some percent was the decrease. But I just read something recently where it said in 2018 they expected 7.50 percent, but it, it was less. It was 7. Point 25%. So that sounds like a lot less of a drop. I, I, I you have to show me what you were looking at because okay, that's not the information flyer. there. Okay, yeah, it's, it's what they're uh, promising the return will be. They uh, promised the return would be 7.5 oh, okay. and now they're promising so, 7.25. So when the actuaries do their work, they assume a return. 
Uh, up until last year, they were assuming seven and a half percent. Okay. Now they're assuming seven and a quarter percent. Okay, so I'm talking a return. Mm -hmm. you're well, talking it's it's the return. It's the discount uh, rate that they use to, okay. you know, to discount uh, their future obligations to the present. You know, so they have a present value to measure sure, sure. against and, okay. uh, and so forth. That makes sense then. All right, thanks. Okay. Um, some more good news. Um, group health insurance, the first uh, return that we had uh, showed our rate uh, decreasing uh, approximately 2%. So uh, that's, that's the effect. Uh, that's the effect there. Um, overall, in employee uh, benefits, uh, we're seeing a positive impact of about $43,000. Uh, utilities on page six. Um, you see some, uh, some favorable numbers there. Those are mostly the top two, gas and electric. I'm driving off of the intergovernmental agreement. So we should see some uh, favorable activity uh, uh, there once we are able to sign on. And uh, our experience with the uh, uh, water was just just did not justify uh, a budget line item of $9,700. So if you look at total operating expenses, about two thirds down page six. Uh, last year we had operating expenses of five million eight hundred and thirty. Uh, this year's uh, budget is five million eight hundred and fifty-eight. For a difference, an increase of twenty-seven thousand, um, which really, at these levels, is rounding error. Uh, on the bottom, of page six, um, we're going to be doing quite a bit of work. I see. <laughs> um, the big number, uh, the big number for the special reserve building, is uh, one point two million dollars. Uh, we're planning on, uh, on doing the roof. The, uh, we've been able to maintain the roof. We're starting to get, you see where I'm talking about that? Uh, you see, we got 1.5 million. Yeah, but of oh, that 1.2 million oh. is, is the roof. Um, so uh, we, uh, the roof is uh, 20 years old across the board. We have some soft spots, and, and uh, we do have some. Uh, Flashing problems that we're trying to address and, and so forth. And uh, the last part of the roof just went out of warranty. So it's time to seriously consider what what to do next. So I think we're going to start investigating it. We may be lucky and be able to do it within the fiscal year. Um, but I can't promise uh, at this point. And on the equipment side, um, the uh, well, there's a couple of uh, things which are large. The biggest thing is, is the replacement of our server farm. Um, our servers are eight years old, uh, coming up on eight years old. So um, end of life, and it's you know, it's time to uh, it's time to replace them with uh, newer, better, faster equipment uh, as it exists today. How many servers do that? I mean, the confusion is we have a number of virtual servers, uh, but the actual appliances I think are four. Uh, but I'll confirm that back to you. Um, also, um, also in the uh, equipment line is about uh, $25,000, which doesn't sound like it's very much to talk about, but it represents the, uh, about $125,000. Um, $25,000 is the annual payment that we'll have to uh, maintain our um, automated materials handling uh, machine downstairs, the, uh, the sorter. So when we bought the sorter, we spent about half a million dollars Approximately 350,000 was the equipment, and 150,000 was the maintenance, and that carried us for six years. We're at the end of six years, if you can believe it or not. Uh, I think relatively soon. 
And so we have to start looking forward to make sure that we're, we continue to be under uh, under a maintenance agreement. In addition, there's about $95,000 um, that um, we're planning to spend to replace all of our um, automated checkouts. Uh, the automated checkouts are just big computers. They're six years old. It's, wow. it's time to uh, it's time to replace them. We did look at refurbishing them, which you know, which would uh, take them a long way. But you know, um, we, the refurbishing I think was about sixty-five to seventy thousand. And why not, you know, have a new piece of equipment for uh, you know for a smaller amount more and. Uh, so that's that's what we're looking at. We're, you know, we're having a little bit of an issue with uh, Biblioteca, who's the uh, man. I, I call them the manufacturer. They actually acquired the 3M business that that we bought the sorter from. Um, so they, you know, they're a little bit difficult to deal with in terms of getting solid numbers and making uh, solid presentations and so forth. And we'll continue to work with them to get the best deal on behalf of the library. But it's going to be somewhere, you know, in that 65 to 95 range. Um, looking at page seven, um, our audit expense decreased 12,200 um, due to the uh, bidding that we did uh, earlier this year. So I had a question about this. Greg it says. Estimate until bid is sought and presented to board. And I thought we did get there before. That uh, that's that's an artifact from the previous year. Oh, okay. sorry about okay. that. So 9,000 is the amount of the current executive board request, but the number was pretty low. Yeah, yeah. so exactly 9,000 okay. for the yeah. next year. I think it's 9,500 yeah. for, okay. uh, for the next year, 9,300. Okay. Um, liability insurance, um, I have no idea. Um, we're out to bid, taking it to market. And uh, that thirty-five thousand is just an estimate at this point. And uh, save for uh, uh, workers' compensation of twenty-seven thousand, um, it may be higher, maybe lower. Uh, Social Security is a calculated number based on the wages uh, up in the salary accounts. So two sixty-five. Unemployment compensation runs us about twenty thousand dollars a year. And then uh, the last group of accounts is uh, consists of, of the accounts that we use to maintain the building on an ongoing basis. So uh, in things like contractual maintenance, we have you know we have our uh, HVAC contracts you know with uh, with Oakbrook Mechanical and uh, for them to come out and, and ABC. Uh, which is another HVAC vendor to come out and make sure that they're fine-tuning the equipment. Uh, the non-contractual maintenance uh, is our month-to-month -month, uh, providers. So, you know, things like garbage pickup <coughs> and, and uh, nightly cleanup uh, around the library, in addition to what Dave and his team do during the day. Uh, equipment maintenance is just what it sounds like. Um, sometimes. Uh, we have to buy a piece of equipment or something. Uh, this is primarily in the IT area, you know, so mouses, mice, keyboards, you know, things of that nature. We have a certain amount of fails a, uh, a year and we try to uh, stay on top of it. And then we have uh, an amount allocated to uh, furniture and fixtures. Okay. Overall, the budget is 8.4 million, but it includes about 1. Point, almost 2 million uh, in the uh, special reserve accounts, um, compared to 7.3 million, which includes, I think, uh, 900 and something thousand uh, uh, last year in the uh, special reserve accounts. So, if you say took out 1.2 million, we're going to spend on the roof, we'd actually be in a kind of budget for this coming year. Yeah, yeah, uh, not, alone not by a lot, but yeah. 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 Okay. And, um, you know, the other thing that I want to note <coughs> to the board is that the uh, uh, current balance in the uh, cash account and the special reserve account is about 1.2 million total. So accomplishing this capital plan will necessitate additional 
uh, movement of money to the reserves. So when would we need to do that? Well, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it until until the roof comes into focus. Okay. You know, more acutely. I mean, right now we could, you know, uh, we could pay for virtually everything else but the roof at this point. Okay. Uh, but as as uh, uh, Dave and I continue to look at the roof, look at talk to contractors, and mm -hmm. you know, get their estimates and, and so forth before we actually formulate. A uh, bid, uh, mm -hmm. then uh, we won't know specifically how okay. much. All right. Um, okay. Thank you uh, very much. Now, uh, Greg, you're going to be emailing this uh, yeah. to us. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll fix that. Make I, you a few little changes and email it out. Yep. So, um, what I suggest is if anyone has any questions, that you um, ask those questions on the evening we've reserved for discussing the budget, that is May 20th. And then the other members who are missing tonight, two of our members, will have a chance to hear all the questions and the answers at that time. So uh, we'll pick up with this then. We have uh, over a month to look at it in the meantime, and we can discuss it more then. Uh, but we do have a couple of other items on our agenda tonight. Excuse me, can I just um, ask one quick question about the roof? Is that a complete replacement, or are we still patching? Uh, well, for one point two million, it anticipates uh, completely stripping it off uh -huh. and, so and replacing the substrata as okay, well as so as well as the membrane. Good. All right. Now, I will tell you that you know we continue to look at it and assess it. Um, if in fact the substrata is better than what we expected. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, there may be portions that where we don't have to do that. Okay, sure. No, no, I'm thinking it's probably time to mm -hmm. just, you know, go down to the bare minimum and replace. Okay, thanks. That sounds good. So way they have to lift the cooler in order to replace the turn bolt. Turn bolt coat. It's not like a bulkhead. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you for this. All right. Yeah. Okay, well then move on to unfinished business. You don't need any bother or anything in this right now. We're just going to finish up basically. So move on to unfinished business. And um, let's see what we have. Um, we have a report on the information we asked you to gather regarding uh, public comment. Um, is that in, <clears throat> did you also have any discussion of any new developments that we received? Yeah. Um, well, I did um, talk to or look up uh, and got some email communication with a lot of different libraries to find out if anybody does um, public comment more than once in a meeting. There are uh, a couple of libraries that do do that, um, but uh, the only place I could find looking at the park districts, the school districts, the townships, the village of Niles, and libraries, the only place I could find that allows people to comment before each agenda item as was being discussed at the last meeting is Glenview. And I did confirm that with the library director there. They started, they have a, a thing where there's a form they can fill out at the beginning of the meeting where they can say, I'm going to want to talk to this point and this point. And those items on the agenda are, have an asterisk by them. They started doing that when um, they were getting ready to build a new building and the community was bitterly divided over which site they were going to use. And so it's actually a way of their making the public comments shorter. They, they were trying to stop people from taking a huge amount of time at the beginning of the meeting and, direct, and you know, limiting that to the X number of minutes and then saying, but you can talk about the other things during the meeting. So that was how that came about, is by a particular situation there. Nobody else uh, allows people to comment intermittently during the meeting. There are a couple places that do have public comment both before and after. Um, I did hear back from another library that Carolyn did some investigating too. Carolyn, I don't know if you turned up any different information. Yes, um, actually, um, I also contacted libraries not so far um, downstate or up north, uh, more closer to our proximity. Um, I contacted Maine Township, and I also contact, contacted the Village of Niles, which um, I did not get the same response that you received. The Village does allow public comments twice, 
at the beginning of the meeting, and they also allow them at the end, and there's no contingency required. Uh, residents are just allowed differentiating factors. In the beginning, it has to do with agenda items. At the end of the meeting, it could be whatever topic they choose. Um, Maine Township allows public comments at the beginning of the board meeting and for all of their agenda items. Uh, it does not say that on their agenda or in their well, documents. It's, it's and practice. I watched a number of, of the meetings and I oh, did not no, see then, anything. Oh, like then that. you must have missed all the hands because I've been there. Um, I actually spoke with a trustee from Maine Township and um, she, I, I know because I go to the meetings, but she confirmed that. And then also, Park Ridge allows public comments at the beginning of their meeting and in practice throughout their board meeting as well. So they allow residents to um, ask questions throughout their entire board meeting. Um, then the last one was Northbrook. They have um, a time for public comments and the board president or designee may grant a request to address the board during other portions of the meeting um, by the public. So they also allow that. Um, but now that we, you know, you've, you've found your information and I've located mine, what I'm trying to say is, as trustees, since we have um, some requests that we allow residents to speak, um, especially the, the, the case here that I think is more prevalent is, is uh, residents would like to speak before we take a vote. Um, as you can see, the library is filled with staff members, not residents. Uh, we don't have an influx. But I think if residents show up, because whatever issue we're discussing, I just feel as trustees, you know, we should recognize the fact that they have a concern. And to allow them to speak before we vote, it, it shouldn't um, be so difficult for us to accomplish. I, I just feel, that, you know, we, we should really, as trustees, consider that. And that was my purpose of bringing this up. Um, Susan, I, one thing I didn't catch from you. So how many different places did you contact? Um, I, I don't know, I can't count, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, 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 twenty
Carolyn, I didn't say that. Well, I mean, why? I said that why they can all matter? give their comments at the very beginning of the meeting, and they can comment on whatever they want at the beginning of the meeting. And that's how you know we've done it for some time. Um, you know, my residents can comment on whatever agenda item they might want, or even on non-agenda items at the beginning of the meeting. So, but I'm going to let some other people talk uh, about their feelings about it too. Um, maybe we have some other thoughts here. So, um, Tim, what would you like? Uh, yes. Um, <clears throat> I understand that one or two residents have asked for this. Um, however, uh, if we make a rule, that would mean that any resident who came to our meeting, and there could be, uh, I understand we haven't had many in the past, but that doesn't mean we won't have many in the future. We could have 10, 15, 20, 30, you know, who knows how many we have. If we make a rule that they could address every vote, every item that's being voted on, we could have a tremendous amount of time being taken throughout the meeting. Uh, also, they do have an opportunity to discuss. They, they, we, we give them um, the time before the meeting and then we tell them what's going to be on the agenda. All they have to do is look through and say, I want to talk about the, the roof if that's going to be on the agenda. So they have plenty of opportunity. So um, I am not for this uh, on those two bases. Uh, Linda, do you have some thoughts on this? Um, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit confused on exactly what is being proposed. Um, that there's an objection that people are able to speak after each discussion of every agenda before every agenda vote? Is that Here, here's what clear? I wrote. This is what I wrote. Members of the public address line were for any vote by the trustees. That was what I wrote. Okay. All right. For one thing, that to me is way too broad. I would, I would not want the same person talking about every single vote that I'm going to be doing. If they wanted to come in and generalize and talk to us, about you know with the five minutes they can talk about every single vote that's on their prior they'd be able to um to open up that each time for the same person after we discuss and give them another five minutes like that would be to me exhausting then run run for the board um as how that is written, I don't agree. I definitely agree with public comment. I wouldn't have a problem with adding even another beginning and the end. I wouldn't even mind. Or if you put it down as you're able to speak for pick your agenda item and speak that time, I don't, you know, if you wanted to speak, but I don't see why if you're picking an agenda item that you couldn't just speak in the beginning. What's the difference? Just have it all at once, and then we can actually get our momentum of our meeting going. I think it would just break the momentum up incredibly. But I, I, I understand, understand your point, Carolyn. However, I just feel that we're here to do a job, and I think that would really interrupt our job. Yes, we want input, and yes, I do. They able to email us, talk with us, telephone. There's so many ways to communicate. You don't need to do it right here at our meeting at the moment. You realize your comments during that topic All right. are what would cause them to want to respond. But the thing is, when I want to make and talk to my people who are at, you know, like say that I want to talk to my um, my state representative, I email them and tell them my opinion and hope they vote my way. I don't go to their meetings and I want to talk at between and before every single time they vote. Let's I go and I email them and I tell them how my, what my stand is and I hope that they listen. <coughs> I'm going to uh, move on, uh, Dane. Um, the accusation that this is what people want is just not clear because the only person I know asking for this is you. So we don't have an abundance of people who are asking for this. First of all, I just want to make that clear. Is someone's phone call? Um, I think that there's plenty of time at the beginning of the meeting. I think that's a wonderful time 
And I'm glad to hear people express their opinions and their feelings. I don't understand why at the end they get to make a comment, well, you shouldn't have done this, you should have done this. Or, I mean, the vote is taken, the vote is over. What's the point of comments at the end? I think one of the bodies, if I understood it, had comments at the beginning on agenda items and comments on non-agenda items could be made at the end of the meeting. But to me, that seems sort of, I don't know, it sort of seems mean to the people if they have to come at 7 o'clock to make comments at agenda, and then they have to sit for two hours, three hours sometimes, to make a comment on a non-agenda item at the end. So to me, that seems like it makes it even more inconvenient for the public to require them to do that. So I'm not really sure that that is helpful to the public. Um, any other thoughts? Okay. All right. Um, Maybe somehow we should promote the idea that we want more public participation and that we would like to hear more from the community. I mean, I don't know how we can promote that. Well, when they come here, we should allow them to speak. Well, we do. do. We well, do if they're requesting, if they a couple cannot, of them... I'm sorry, but I don't think they should be interrupting throughout the meeting. We'll never get done. We well, have business to conduct. Well, so do other meetings. They just, they fit it all in. We just don't seem to share the same um, opinion <coughs> as what our meeting should consist of. Well, it can get a little heated also. Yeah. Well, that's the way it goes. I'm just saying, I don't, I, I don't agree with what you just said, because as of what we've seen, you might see, and I have to talk with Parker to pleasure myself, Please do, but it doesn't. It doesn't matter. We're talking about singletons here. We're not talking about multitudes of different libraries that are doing the same thing we're doing. We're doing nothing wrong. We're doing exactly the norm, and still doing, and still having our people talk and <coughs> listen to what they have to say. So you're, what you're saying is that we're not doing what other people are doing. We no. are so much doing what I'm everyone else is doing. I'm saying a resident requested this. And we should honor residents' requests. It won't kill us to do this. But one resident is going to drive our whole board Believe me, many residents would like to speak to you before you vote. There Maybe not on these few items that Greg has, but, but there's there larger issues that they would like to speak to you before you vote on. Very they, they can do that at the very beginning of the meeting. Well, I'm just saying, they've all I, I've gotten requests, I brought it to you, somebody showed up, it's up to this board to do whatever you choose. Very well the I, I will just comment that the, the libraries that you mentioned that do handle it a little bit differently are all municipal libraries so that I think that they're getting some uh, some talk from their you know the people that set their budget they are being their budget is not set by themselves they create their budget but it's actually voted on by the people at the village or the, at the city so it's the city politicians that want the residents to be able to talk directly to the people at the library as much as policy as possible Park Ridge, Northbrook, and right. it's not it's not a political all statement. It's a response to a request by residents. Very simple. How many one residents? Resident. I don't know. It depends if they're meeting. Sometimes there's no, seven. No, how many residents have, have requested this of you? I have nobody's requested this of me. I know. I'm aware of that. But I've had well, several aware requests. Of it. I just told it to you. <laughs> well, we, we don't share the same um, <laughs> opinions on a lot of things, so people probably don't go to you, but they come to me. But what I'm trying to say is it's, it's elsewhere, right here in our local area, um, and I don't well, see Well, can I ask you a question? How many residents have asked for this from you? I don't know. I guess the count will let you know. Like 100, 1,000, 10, 5? Oh, God, no. I don't talk to 1,000 people. 8? So it doesn't matter. The fact of the well, matter is actually it does matter because you had said residents, but as far yes. as I know, only one person has come to this meeting well, to ask Well, that's true, and as you, if, if you haven't noticed, very few people do come to our meetings, and if we could try to engage with them, maybe we can increase their participation. Okay. I would be yeah. happy to set up opportunities for board members to meet with residents at other times. We did that last year during National Library Week. We didn't this year because we had our anniversary instead, but I'm more than happy to set up other opportunities. You know, I think Meetings that's a are good idea, to Social events. events. Um, because we, we did do that. We, we had a table. I remember we sat out uh, downstairs at library, National Library Week, I think it was. We've done that before. And I, I think that's a good opportunity 
uh, particularly for people who might not want to get up and speak in front of a group of people, right. but are more comfortable speaking on an informal basis. So I think uh, I think a number of us would welcome the opportunity to do that. Um, so if there's other events or times when we might do that. I believe we were going to do that again this year. Mm -hmm. Susan, you well, mentioned you we were going to try a second yeah. time. Yeah, but we have the 60th anniversary. I mean, if you no, I, I'm just saying, yeah, it's yeah. already been on. But this is a completely different element of questions okay. and a situation. All right, well, well, all right. If, if you, uh, Carolyn, want to propose a motion, you can make the motion. Well, the motion I would <clears throat> like to propose is to allow members of the public <coughs> who are interested to address the library board before any vote by the trustees. Well, how is that different than what we do right now? No one is allowed to speak before you vote on an issue. They're, they're allowed to speak at the beginning of the meeting. Okay, the, the request is, after we have a deliberation about who knows what, um, some residents would like to be able to speak once they've heard Greg's input, Susan's input, trustee's opinions about why they will or won't do this. Is, is that all in it? Is that what you want us to do? No, she asked me a question and I responded. I know what. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry, would you read again what you want us to do? Yes. Write? Members of the public who are interested can address the library board before any vote by trustees. Well, okay, does anyone want to second that? It's already what we do. Okay, then the motion dies for like a second. Okay, we do not allow the public to speak before you vote. So how is it that you plan to do that? Any vote that we have it's before any vote, that's what it is. Before any vote, at the beginning of the meeting. Before no, we no, make no, any, no. Before we make any vote. No. So, um, All right, so there's it's each there. agenda item before it's voted on. That's not what it says. You know, I don't know how much simpler to make it for you, but would you like me to just have a... Uh, redo this but we don't we don't i don't think we want you to do anything uh you made a motion um uh, the motion will fail for the last couple of second so i think we need to go so on can i can i can i um alter the motion well what you want because, to another motion well right. linda said i didn't say before each right. agenda item. what motion do you want to make now well linda said because i didn't say she claims we do this already and we don't we do. so we but anyway, go ahead. What your What's motion? your new motion? So my question to this board, since I'm the only one on the outside. Oh, no, are you making a motion? What's your motion? Yes. Your motion? How is it that I need to word this <laughs> well, so after each agenda item, before you take a vote? I'm not doing your job. Word it the way you want to word it. I'm going to vote it. What is your problem? You know, I, I think we're you know, I you really like to know what your I problem is. I want you is. to make a motion. Make I'm a motion. asking that this board, for once in its life, try to work together. Make a motion. I, we make I already made a motion, and according to Linda, it wasn't clear enough. So could you please give me your input how to make this clearer for you? I'm not here to play games. I'm really trying to accomplish something. Fine. So then what is it that I need to add to this? For example, according to Linda, that would make a difference. Well, I don't know that um, Linda said she was going to actually vote for it. If you right. It would make a change. Right, but it would have to be for each. You'd have to say each and not just the four. Members of the public who are interested can address the library board before each vote, not any vote. One person doesn't want to talk to you about everything you plan on voting on. They just want to talk about maybe one item of interest. So is the problem you don't want to vote for this at all, or and I'm just wasting my time trying to change the verbiage? I, you know, I, I don't hear among the members that most or a majority of the members are in support of changing the rules of the Fine, area. don't waste my time. Thank okay. you. Okay, fine. All right, let's go on to the next matter. Um, last under unfinished business, Carolyn, you had requested a uh, change to the uh, agenda links for the monthly library board meeting videos. 
Is that right? I requested yeah. an update um, because I wasn't okay. able to get it to work. Okay. Status. Uh, when you go on YouTube, you click the link from our website, or you go on YouTube it goes and you nowhere. click see more, it pops out the agenda and you can... Well, it takes you to like different screens. I ended up all over the place and I was wondering why it seemed so... It just didn't seem fluid, it didn't flow. So um, I wanted to actually, um, discussing it with the board, I guess, isn't a good idea. What I'd like to do is to better understand it, I was hoping to maybe schedule 15, 20 minutes to talk to um, Rich and maybe Sasha, who I think is involved with this, to um, see how this actually functions. Because I had gotten a couple of recommendations that are quick and easy, and I wanted to see how that would work for our library or not. And then I don't have to waste your time. Well, you know, you know Great. You just sent us an email today, didn't you? Was it? Uh, well, Diane, Diane, you yeah, sent, yeah, it? Diane well, sent, sent it out on Friday when the board packets go out and uh, I sent out the agenda. I I write down in the email how to go about seeing the YouTube. And I think you did that in the last one you sent out. Right. I use okay. And I used the instructions that were in the. Um, well, anyway, back to my request. I would like to sit with um, IT with Rich and Sasha just for 15 minutes to talk about what I had recommended and see how it relates to what we're doing. Because it's very quick, at least the two I've seen. And that's what I'd like to do. So um, would it be possible for me maybe to call Rich and Sasha or email them and see if I can yeah, well, fit Why in? don't you work with uh, Susan and Ned about you know, setting up okay. a meeting with them? By any chance, is like, are they on vacation next week? Do we know? Is it Easter or spring break or whatever? I'll have to check with them. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, now, I did say at our last meeting that uh, board members can make uh, comments during the other section of the agenda. Uh, since we, we reserve public comment for the public, uh, is there any other matters that any other that any board members wish to discuss at this point in time? You're all getting better. Oh, thank you. <laughs> all right. Then, uh, hearing none, I will now entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Can I have such a motion? Second. Roll call. Here. Yes. Here. 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 Here.